Answering phones is the easiest part of this job. Hi, this is Jody. The difficult part is making sure the person on the other end doesn't pull the trigger, overdose, or make the jump. Do you have a thought about ending your life? Or you Crisis worker Jody Dat says she deals with these kinds of calls several times a day. Her job helping people who are a threat to themselves okay, or so others or anyone else okay. suffering from mental illness. Can you um, participate in that plan with me and, and agree to keep yourself safe? The Jackson County Crisis Team has nine people taking calls around the clock. After hours and on the weekends, the team gets about 250 calls. During the week, it gets about 100. It's sort of our job to bring that level of crisis down. Staff at the agency say the calls break down evenly, with an equal portion coming from concerned family, community members, suicidal or homicidal people, and those suffering from other mental illnesses. Dat says her most difficult calls dealing with suicidal individuals who have a plan. It's sort of like, you know, everything else slips away in that moment, and I feel very focused and committed to helping that person get the help they need. Depending on the severity of the crisis, Dat says she may have to call for backup, bringing Medford police officers in the fight against time to save that person. Police get into this business in order to help people. It's kind of this, this big cliche that, you know, why do you want to get in police work? I want to help people. Patrol Lieutenant Curtis Whipple says officers respond daily to people in crisis. Once they arrive on scene, their job is to keep the person safe, but they don't always get the end result they want to see. Through the beginning of November, there have been more than 500 suicides and attempts. It's my job to ensure that you're safe. Dat says the chance to make a difference gets her through the hard calls. I feel like I've helped in giving them the opportunity to make a different choice. But the final decision isn't on this end of the line. Covering your news in Medford, Ariana Rockshawnee, News 10. So these are all things, these are all problems that a case manager... Rats and cats and bats and hats. There's about 250 members at Compass House, a clubhouse for mental health diagnoses. How you doing now? Executive Director Matthew Borderstraw says one in four people suffer from mental illness. It's not a death sentence. It's something that can be lived with. Borderstraw says many members are more than just living with it. They're moving forward with their lives. He says about three out of five members have a background of being hospitalized for their mental illness. Trying to get back into the, to the swing of life. Borderstraw says one member was hospitalized several months ago and since then has grown dramatically. This member was actually able to develop, help develop our transportation plan and put it in place and helped write grants so that we could get new, a new vehicle. Hi, my name is... This Kenima person is Kanima Rodman. She has dissociative identity disorder, formerly known as multiple personality disorder. A lot of times that does develop into having different, what they call alters or different parts of you that pop in and out to deal with different situations. She says the stress-related disorder came after years of childhood abuse and has severely affected her life. Sometimes she'll dissociate without a stress trigger. If I relate it back to like nail biting, that might sometimes develop over time from an anxiety, but then it also becomes a habit where maybe you're not under stress, but you still are used to biting your nails and you still do it. So um, that's still true with dissociating for me. Now she's learning to live with it and defeat the stigma of mental health. To the people who don't believe in it or to the people who um, doubt me to be like, you know what, cool, you're giving me encouragement too because I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> Rodman is working with several different agencies, including Rogue Valley Transportation District, to fix transportation issues in the valley. Kind of crossing that bridge and bringing all these people together in hopes of finding a solution. It's not just Rodman who's moved forward in her life. During Compass House's first year of operation, 97% of active members had zero hospitalizations due to mental illness. We're actually able to decrease overall use of psychiatric facilities, um, especially in regard to mental health hospitalization. According to Asante Rogue Regional Medical Center's Behavioral Unit, from May 2013 to April 2014, 21% of patients had been readmitted. During that same time period the following year, the same year Compass House was born in Medford, that percentage dropped to 17. I don't think I would have been involved in the community as I am currently without the Compass House. Rodman says she's not going to stop. She's going to continue to move forward. Covering your news in Medford, Ariana Rockshawnee, News 10.